Hi, this is Aaron at thinkbotlabs.com and welcome back. This is part two of saving and loading data in Unity. If you missed part one, I'll leave a link in the description so you can go back and check it out. So for this part, the first thing we need to do is create a main menu that has a button on it where we can load the last save. So from scene one, I'm just going to go ahead and do a file save as. And then in our scenes, I'm going to create a main menu scene. Okay, so we're here in the main menu. So the first thing we need to do, we need to add our main menu to the build. So file, build settings. We're going to add the open scene. Go ahead and grab him and move him up to the very top. That way he is in index number zero. Okay. In the main menu, we don't need the background. We don't need the middle ground. Don't need the player. Don't need the foreground. Uh, what else do we not need? We don't need a follow target script. Um, on the UI, we do not need... Well, we just we can go ahead and leave those on there. Uh, the game manager, we don't need the game manager script because we're not going to have any switches or exit doors. And on our menu, that should be good. Alright, let's go ahead and in the menu UI, let's go ahead and enable that. And let's focus on that area. And instead of the save button, we're going to have a load button. So let's go ahead and go to the save. And let's rename this load button. And we'll wire it up after we have the load function created. And anything else in here? Nope, that should be it. All right, so let's go to our menu first. So let's go to our scripts and menu. I have uh, increased the font on this, uh, the font size. A couple people have um, said it's kind of hard to uh, view all the text in the video. So let me know if this font size is a little bit better. Um, in the menu script, we do need to add a new state for our um, main menu. So for menu states, we need to add main menu. And we're doing this because currently on Awake, when we have our menu, we're setting our uh, current uh, menu state to uh, playing. And here we need to say that if scene manager dot get active scene dot build index. So if the build index is equal to zero, which means if we're on the main menu, our current state is going to be equal to menu state. Dot main menu and then else if all else were not in the main menu our menu state is going to continue to be playing all right so scroll down and we need to add a new um, current state for our um, main menu so let's go ahead and give us some room so case menu states main menu current state equals menu states dot main menu and I am just going to actually grab all these all right we don't have to worry about the time scale and our main menu is going to be true and the pause window is going to be set to true And that's it. So all we need to, to set up in there. All right, and we do need to create one more method, and that's going to be for a new game. So simply public void start new game. And we'll say that there's, we'll use our scene manager dot load scene. And we're going to load scene by the build index of 1. So this is going to be level 1. And instead of the resume button, we're going to call this new game button. Let's go back in here and just say, we'll just call it new. All right, that should be all we need to do in the menu. 
what else do we need to do? Let's go back and we'll rename this to load button. Change the text on here to load. Load. Okay. So this is going to start a new game. So the next thing we need to do is we need to hook up the load. Now, if you remember from the last video, we saved our current level serialized out to our save.rd file. So we need to pull that back. So reading from our game manager was pretty easy, but writing back into it, we need to update our singleton just a little bit. And so what I did here is create us a public static game manager instance for our singleton of the game manager. We need to see if the instance already exists. So we're going to see if the instance equals null. If not, we're going to set the instance to this. And then just to make sure that there's only one instance of the game manager running in the scene, we're going to check if the instance is not this. If it is, destroy it. And then in save data, save load data, we create a reference to the game manager. And then in awake, we initialize game manager to game manager dot instance. And then just down here where we save our items, I've updated this to game manager dot get current level. Okay. So for our load, I'm going to create a new function public void load game um, load data. And so whatever data that we have stored in our file we're going to load it here in this method. So in load data, we're going to use a lot of these same um, methods that we use to save the data. We're just going to reverse that process. So we need to first check if the file dot exists in the application dot data path, save games, save dot rd. And so if the file does exist, we're going to create a new binary formatter, bf equals new binary formatter, and then a new file stream. To open that file, and we're going to open the application.datapath plus Save, save games, save.rd. And we also have to tell it that our file mode is going to be open. And then to deserialize, because remember we serialized the data to put it into the file, we have to do that reverse process and deserialize it. So to do that, we're going to say that our save manager save manager. This is where we're wanting to save deserialize the data back to equals save manager bf dot deserialize and we're deserializing the file stream or the file. And that's it. That's how you deserialize. And then after we've deserialized something, we need to, or after we've opened the file, we need to go ahead and then close it once we're finished with it. And just to make sure that the file does exist and we don't throw any errors, we'll need to say that, we'll throw a little statement in here to say, if the file doesn't exist, we're just, for now we'll just debug out a log, debug.log. No saved file present. So now we need to get our current level set back into our game. So in the game manager, we're going to create one more method, and that's going to be public void load last save, and we are going to pass it an integer. And to load uh, a scene, we're going to use our scene manager dot load scene 
and this is asking for that build index number and we're just going to pass it x so whatever value we pass this it's automatically going to load that scene for us and the value that we're passing to it is going to be our current level so after we've closed the file um, after we've opened it and deserialized it and so all we need to say here is game manager dot load last save and it is asking for an int so we're going to use our save manager dot current level and that should be it so again we're seeing if the file does exist so we can um, do some work on it and if it does exist we're going to create a new binary formatter object and then in our file stream we're going to open that file in a file open mode and then we're going to deserialize that file back into the save manager and then we'll close the file once we're finished and then finally we're going to use our game manager last load save or load last save method to pass in the save manager current level that we've deserialized so let's go ahead and save all these and we'll go back to our main menu and let's hook up these buttons so on the rename this new game so on the new game button we need to go to menu menu dot start new game and then on the load button we need to go to save load data load data all right got that set up uh, on a game manager make sure you do have the game manager script attached let's play it all right so we are going to load into and it should be scene two cool so we're on scene two you can see in the upper left hand corner it says two dot unity that's it for saving and loading data in unity uh, like i said before any other items that you want to serialize just create some more um, variables here in our save manager and then we'll save them in and then we'll we can load them back out via serialization um, into our file that we've created that's it for this tutorial don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos and we'll see you in the next one till then